Hey guys, how's it? In the name of Christ, how you doing? Um, it's Garabo. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're stellar, and I hope you're in a neat little bunch. Um, huh? Yeah. Anyway, mm, yeah. Hope all is good. That ends well. Once um, uh, let me just put some caveats out there. Okay, it's the twenty fifth of January, twenty twenty four. I already recorded a video on the wee hours of this morning earlier, much earlier, but I'm doing another one now because I just need to come here and speak one. Never mind, I want to speak. Anyway, caveats, uh, my captions, they're not always accurate, so please look out for that. I don't have an editor, anybody to help me along, and I am, um, they're also irreverent for God, but I keep them there because I think they're cute, so we're just going to stick with them, and then... I may or may not be wearing application makeup. If I am, it's going to be bouncing up and down. So look out for that. Um, my hair. We have the spritz. I did say that I was going to add that segment. This is carrot, mango, and some aloe, maybe even cranberry juice that I've decided to spritz on my hair. Homemade, so it stays in the fridge. I've just decided to like hook it up on my hair to see what's going to be the difference um, after some time. Like as a daily moisturizer without really bringing down my protective style. Speaking of the protective style of which, it looks a lot better after a dug has been on it, right? Anyway, let me just spritz my made my 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 kitchen really smooth. Like it makes it feel soft. I don't know. Carrots make kitchens soft. It's called a kitchen, like the nape. Mm. Anyway, the plan is not to go extreme with this every day just like surface level moisture type establishment thing okay i'm supposed to take this back to the fridge but i'm just like seriously not feeling the prospect of growing now but then what like it literally smells like carrots anyway maybe it's gonna help my hair grow i don't know i don't even know if i'm gonna be able to be consistent and maintain it especially considering i gotta like get up and send it to the kitchen and stuff mm, and i can't just let it sit here for like the whole time that i'm talking Except I'm gonna do that today because I'm feeling really trashy. I'm always feeling trashy, but now we've got the smell of carrots everywhere. Uh, okay, so this is my hair thingy. Uh, yeah. What what exactly is going on? It's my head scratcher. What's going on? Uh, I don't know, yo. I don't know. I really don't know. I do not know what's happening. I do not know even in the slightest. I wanted to redo my twists, but I'm just not trying to touch my hair like proper. I'm leaving it alone. Okay, so yeah. I, I really don't know what to believe, what's what's happening. Like, I just, I have no clue. I don't know what to believe in. Like, I often wonder if I, if I was not put in this position, if I'd be looking out so much for the second coming, I can't have that be my only hope or the rapture. We just, yeah. There's too much evil, and too much horribleness, just too much nasty going on everywhere. And I don't know why people still think we all have a future here. Then again, you know, people are able to just live life as normal uh, when they're okay. I keep seeing hellfire, y'all, like just people being just sent there. Like last night, I was just. I got this like barrage of such imagery of hellfire anyway i'm not well i'm not feeling okay i'm hurting I'm, I'm under attack i keep getting harassed and i don't really know when it's gonna stop but this is me coming to daily just record my progress i really don't know uh, night before last or yesterday day before yesterday night before last depending Really, how you want to look at it, but day before yesterday, um, no, not day before yesterday, yesterday, not today, yeah, not today, but yesterday when I woke up, you know, that, that space between waking up and being in dream space, yeah, yeah, it's very active with dreams and stuff, it's very active with, uh, what do you call this, do I have a pimple there, oh goodness, whatever. It's very active with activity, you get my point, okay? 
and when as i was coming out of it i heard the holy spirit say it came on them like a thief in the night it's like he, it came on them like a thief in the night it came on them like a thief in the night and i was like what what came on them like a thief in the night what uh well i mean there's only one thing that comes like a thief in the night it's the day of the lord uh, uh, uh scripturally biblically but i just i'm so flattened because yo i don't know like i just i, I like mm, 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 mm. i don't know i really 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 don't know what's happening i don't know i do not know all i know is that this country is filthy this this here south africa if all countries in the world are anything like what's going on here everybody must just prepare to go into the rapture i am however aware that there have been people all throughout the ages that have imagined that this was it you know yeah mm, they've been saying it's the last days it's the last days and i mean while it is the last days and i believe that i just don't know how last days it is uh but it's very hard for a person in my position to look at anything else a person in my position it's hard for them to look anywhere but there you know what i mean because where am i going i don't know why why this is my life like i really don't understand why why god has allowed me to go through so much more than the regular christian in this country i just don't know what what why why do i have to be so harassed sexually by men um i don't like hey joe i mean i know they generally feel entitled to christian women manip manipulatively but why is joe why is it so bad with me like that's like i don't get it i don't understand i anyway look every anybody that goes through a lot of trauma their case will always be special It'll, to them it's gonna be unique to them yeah but when a person is going through horror the world just ish yo it's just so hard to look at people living when you're living in a horror movie 24 hours a day it, like people have no idea what what people are going through people don't know what people are going through like like there are people who live in a nightmare for 24 hours i i guess yeah look you know yeah i know uh, yeah kidnapping a hostage situation a takeover murder the seconds before it rape during rape during murder during a kidnapping the whole duration of your hostage crisis your situation where you're in where you you're a hostage there are literally people continuing to eat, wake up, go to school, go to work, while you just live 24 hours a day under some pretty filthy psychopaths that have decided to do whatever they want with another human being. I never imagined ever in my life that I would ever be in this kind of situation. Like, it's just so bad. It is so bad. Like, who, who when they're still growing up, ever plans or imagines themselves being gang raped or killed slowly or held hostage kept in a basement by some pervert for three years four years i can't even be like nobody comes out of that okay yo like there's permanent damage okay like i'm just i'm literally i'm a damaged woman and this just there's no getting out of this there's nothing that can fix me of course christ could but yeah this is not an experience i'm ever gonna forget I, i'm I, I i don't think i can ever be the same woman i used to be like i don't think that's coming back i just do not think so i do not think so and the sad thing is i'm being massacred by my own people like my own so that's what makes it even more tragic you know that's what makes it even more devastating the fact that people i knew I walked these streets with. I hung out with them. I slept in the same beds as them. I grew up in the same households as them. I attended schools with them. I worked with them. And now today I am a hostage and a victim, therefore, of all of them. That's like it, y'all. 
you know when i was when i was working at mtn there is this one colored girl that was butchered she was murdered by her boyfriend friday everybody said bye to her when she went home and she passed away during the weekend this guy she had broken up with him and he was like you are not going to leave me and go and be somebody else's out there i won't have it not on my watch so because um the security guards at her complex were used to him they knew him when he came in they just opened for him on some that's the boyfriend of that girl that's the boyfriend of that woman and they just let him in and in his possession was an axe an axe and he went into her apartment even the fact that she opened for him says that this chick likely did not expect that he would kill her he went there with an axe it takes some time to open a door with an axe or even with your sheer force and when you are busy axing a person to death they scream and stuff what well, like you know at some point somebody would have responded really quickly like if at all the door was bashed in or whatever like violence at the door if she screamed she could have been saved but this whole situation she was disembodied in her apartment she was chopped up into a whole bunch of pieces in her apartment evidencing that this woman opened for him and let him in because she didn't expect that it was the last day on earth for her and he went in there with an axe and butchered her to death she didn't have an axe on her own premises he brought it his intention was to kill her and she so did not believe that anything of that nature could ever happen not at this guy's hands that she opened her apartment for him and then he ended up axing her to death that was such a gruesome story and after it happened at the time i was dating my ex i looked at him i told him the story and i was like would you ever do that to me i don't know what made me ask him that because why would you ask me something like that why would you what the heck like Karabo, are you are you out of your mind why would you ask me if i would ever ask you to death i guess that was just a gut feeling i told my ex that story and then asked him would you ever do that to me weird weird question i don't know where but it turns out it wasn't i don't know where it was reality because i also tried to leave a relationship and look at me being disembodied a person that you would let into your house because you don't expect they're carrying a knife to kill you an axe the things that have been done to me by people i knew are shocking and i am now traumatized and irrecoverably like i will never be okay i will never recover from this especially considering it wasn't just one animal that tried to kill me or two but almost like literally people i like my whole world has done this to me my whole world my family my friends acquaintances former colleagues what the heck yo i don't know if there is a future but how in the world did what happened to me happen guys like how how did this happen how did this happen how are people still trying to put me in the ground how are people still trying to be awkward at my funeral how are people still trying to finish this like it's just beyond me i don't understand i don't understand these people are not mindless drones com co compelled to do wickedness by one evil man yes i'm under a lot of attack by some very disgusting ugh, thing from from the us he just he won't stop but then there's like a couple of other guys from the occult in this country just some disgusting men cool but like yo nobody's a robot you know people <laughs> make choices they make decisions nobody is a puppet on a string these things are done by people whether or not they're under spells it, yeah like people in the occult are naive to think that they're the ones running the show my thing here with what's going on here is that why why isn't it the last days why isn't this the very end when my when you like literally my whole world did this to me my whole world everyone around me i am not like i will literally never be okay again because this is not an isolated incident and it's also not from just one or two people it's my whole world who recovers from that level of betrayal 
who recovers from so many knife wounds that were that, that that were supposed to be fatal but the person is still alive strangely who recovers from the who i'm literally screwed if the rapture doesn't happen and i'm i'm scared that it might not happen because of the fact that there have been some pretty sad stories of people's last days before they died the pain and the agony they were in but during the time that they were in all that agony everybody was literally just living their lives as normal the world was just carrying on when this person was enduring all this agony there are people in the world that die horrible deaths and at the time when they're being killed literally no one is coming and they have to live in that constant fear all the way up until they die with not enough people sparing them a thought and then their bodies get found but the horrors of what they went through in the run-up to their death nobody will ever truly understand that except for the victim i mean i guess i'm blessed because i'm born again so i'm going to heaven but the stuff that's being done to me gets done sometimes to unbelievers so they die a horrible death only to experience a horrible eternity and it's like it's people around you who do this to you how is this not the end explain to me is this not the end but then again you know it's kind of narcissistic to think that it's over the world is ending because your life is over that's been the thing that's been causing me a great deal of confusion about what's going on i won't be the first person to die so horribly at the hands of people they did not expect to kill them and so i can't just assume that the world must be ending because i went through the kind of trauma that most people never get to experience it's been happening to so many people everywhere across the ages i'm not special that's the problem the issue is that i'm not special i'm no different from any other woman that got killed by a man any other woman that got betrayed by friends mistreated by family mistreated by colleagues i won't be the first person fired from their job without a cause i won't be the first person who died without getting justice i won't and with me not being the last nor the first i cannot therefore assume that because i'm going through this that the world must be over my biggest fear is that the world is not over do you understand what i'm saying like my biggest fear is that the world is not over the, the, my biggest fear is that the world might not be ending that we might still have another 50 years here the thing is i don't want to survive this because i don't know what's gonna come out on the other side i don't know who i'm gonna be i don't know what's gonna become i don't know what the trauma is gonna achieve in a restored life i don't know how paranoid i'm always going to be how hard it's gonna be to trust anybody to be normal ever again to be the garawa i used to be i have dread of that prospect i dread being restored because i dread what psycho what, what psychosis i might be permanently left stranded with as a result of what i went through i just don't want to have to i don't want to have to deal with it i don't want to deal with a permanent scar that is going to make it impossible for me to ever be who i was so i dread the future to a, i just long for this to be over i want the world to end or for this to I, I just i cannot live beyond this like i can't be here i can't stay here i can't stay on this earth i cannot stay here it's not it's not i'm not literally i'll never recover i'll never recover i am not getting out of this i will never recover perhaps i'm underestimating god's ability to heal but this is not something a person comes out of and lives i will be on the edge of my seat all the time i will not trust anybody i, I i've just been so badly treated because i was badly treated i've been so hot like I, i've just been so terribly dragged through life i've been spoken to so horribly by people that act in my presence like i'm worthless they just drag me like my name who i am no regard just spitting on my body like i'm nothing and then they pamper each other the, the thing for me is the fact that after they did that to me they comforted each other to get away with it in order to make themselves feel better about having committed crimes they had each other's backs at my expense for me to be on the receiving end of so much 
gang violence because that's exactly what it is like i got ganged on by my whole world in consensus they agreed i am worthless all of a sudden overnight they came to an agreement that i am to be squashed underneath feet and ignored and reviled and abandoned neglected for years to appear like i have no ambition and then after doing this terrible thing they then went one up they uh, they did an extra thing above it and they patted they basically came into a pact and said the the best way to survive and get away with what we did to garabo is to all of us agree that she had it coming so my disregard and the 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 comprehensive abandonment of my pain and the fact that it's it's exceptionally extreme that is something that they all came into agreement with as a necessary evil to endure a person through a 24-hour heartbreak that is excruciating i can't describe what i feel every day all day but it's a it's a deep pain that i can't i don't cry i hold them back because it's worthless to cry but it's been this pain going for a decade non-stop i wake up with it i go to bed with it it consumes me whole every day for a very big portion of my days and sometimes it's all day every day if i don't conquer it it just consumes me whole it makes it impossible for me to sleep it gets exacerbated by constant attack that does not stop coming at me from people so i'm better off when i'm left alone um to feel it but if it or somebody exacerbates it it just i'm basically inconsolable and that amount of heartbreak all day every day for 10 years there is a band of miscreants that came in agreement that i deserve to stay in it they have all just come in concert with each other that i it's either me or them so there's just no respect for human life no respect for sorrow no respect for pain no respect for the fact that nobody lives nobody survives this kind of a life i am alive only because i fear god and my fear of god has awarded me a decade of pain that's just not stopping because i have not ended it myself so i it like i want it to be it can't not be over because how does a person's whole world do this to them it was not just some creep in a bush that pounced on a girl walking through the bush it was not just some weirdo in an alley at night that decided to kidnap and rape a woman it was not some murderer in a grocery store that decided to hold people hostage for 24 hours trying to get some money it was my whole world my whole world did this to me so i mean i'm not special that's the issue but how is it not over when there's anyone on earth even just one person who has their whole world to do this to them how is it not the end of the world how how is this not the day before the rapture how is it not i, I like i said this is not an isolated incident how is it not the end of the world when a the when there's anyone even just one person on earth that has had their whole world do this to them yo i i can i don't understand christian persecution how it happens but it does i guess it's spirits it's wickedness it's darkness it's people choosing to <sighs> look there are there are christians in 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 persecuting countries that get killed by their own family members because they chose jesus so i guess i'm kind of a spoiled brat aren't i because my case is extreme for south africa but there's plenty of dead iranians dead yemenis men and women killed by their own friends and family members told on exposed by their own environment as having chosen jesus and so they got killed these those are people whose whole world turned on them so i guess i'm not unique yeah so i don't know i guess i'm just one of those now i'm one of i'm, I'm just any good old-fashioned dead muslim convert to christianity in a hostile country because yeah this has happened but not in countries like mine but it's happened before where a person's entire world just does this to them because they chose jesus 
yeah it's just the, i guess the weird thing the anomaly the outlier the difference is the fact that this is south africa it's not supposed to be happening here but then again the country hates israel the country's corrupt it's fallen apart the country loves witchcraft it's only a matter of time before a country like that starts to persecute christians the way that middle eastern countries persecute christians the way that china the way that north korea persecutes christians pakistan india it's only a matter of time when a country is that for fallen for gone when a country hates god that much when it's acting like it loves god but it doesn't it's only a matter of time before some christians they start to experience the, ex the kind of extremity in persecution that you find only in certain countries like in the middle east i'm shocked out of my mind perhaps i should listen to testimonies of people who have come out of a situation like mine and still went on and became wives and mothers to see that maybe it's possible i guess there was a, a character there is a character in the bible that went through i guess hell on earth and it appeared that there was no getting out of that post-traumatic stress but he got out joseph he was thrown into slavery by his own brothers worked under potiphar and then got accused of rape of attempted rape by potiphar's wife he then spent time in prison after having been first made a slave and he just took any stride that his brothers are carrying on with life as normal back in canaan or whatever while he is living the life of a prisoner in a foreign country they had all just forgotten him just like me and that is not a pain you ever forget you don't ever re re forget your your former life the people that you used to love and hang with you don't forget that you don't it it hurts to remember what what you used to have now that you've lost it and you've lost it only innocent it's not like you were irresponsible so it always lingers a pain in your heart and when people are throwing insult into those injuries acting like you're worthless speaking about you and to you like you're nothing when you're already going through too much it's not a pain you forget it is not a pain you forget you do not forget it i promise it just lingers and lingers but joseph ultimately got given the wife the children and after his first child was born he named that child manasseh and the name manasseh means the lord has made me forget the pain of my father's household i will name him manasseh because the lord has made me forget the pain of my father's household joseph went through that and he was able to forget i don't know how it's possible just the psychological damage of that much abuse that much abandonment that much neglect that much separation from family because they chose to separate themselves from you and that much moving on with their lives as normal while you suffer that mold just to have to deal with that for years on end with just an extremity of pain and every so often somebody adding insults to those injuries by continuing to speak about how you're worthless you're nothing you're nowhere you're unambitious you are unskilled you are a waste of talent you are a waste of in in intelligence you are worthless while you are down like that they just keep spitting on you like that i don't know who forgets that but joseph did didn't he he forgot it happened so if god could do it for joseph then i guess he can do it for me there are two women from iran that moved to the u.s they have a ministry together they got arrested and were treated pretty terribly in iran they um defected to the u.s and now today are living pretty good lives i think they married and everything with children so it is possible to go through that kind of trauma and be okay i just i don't see it though how is this how is this the world and it not be over then again like i said i'm not special so because i'm not special i can't assume that because my life is so hard that it must be over but i will confess that i i desire strongly that it should be because i dread ptsd i dread the trauma of the future i dread never being able to bounce back ever again that's what i dread so I, I really desperately want it to be true that the rapture is at the door. I do. I want to believe that we're going home and that this is not getting fixed. But that God is going to fix it through 
tribulation and then second coming but what if that's not it must i be subjugated to the tyranny of living with the shock of what my whole world almost did to me but failed can a person recover from this level of betrayal i don't know i guess time will tell but right now i'm exhausted and i keep getting attacked it's like 24 hours now like i just even when i try to heal recover myself i just get pounced on again last night i came here and i spoke at 1 a.m in the morning and it helped a little bit i was able to somewhat sleep even though i struggled entirely and then i got attacked in the morning when i went in the house like it just keeps going and going but i got some i located uh thank god some headphones so now every time i go in the kitchen i just put these in my ear and i play something loud on a phone that sometimes dies in jay yeah uh, so that I don't have to listen to a person that's just constantly going and going about how worthless I am About how Irrevocable I am how I'm done for like I said the people that are busy chopping up my body Are people I never expected would ever chop up my body just like that colored chick from MTN anyway that is the story of my life all is not um lost though it's not like i am being harassed by everything here or everyone but for me one is enough um yeah it's not it's not the whole world around me that's crashing like that but just the like the fact that i, I have no protection nobody stands up for me nobody corrects a search a search a situation when i'm in it i just have to just keep going through it like yeah that's all i can do <sighs> what i'm trying to explain is that it doesn't matter that not everyone is on my neck because all it takes is one person to make me like this I don't have the emotional capacity and I've been dealing for years. I've been surviving for years with a lot of pain, with strategies that I employ. And this time around, my strategies are not working because the person won't down tools. I cannot foster peace. I cannot be left alone successfully. I don't know what to do. I can't be in this amount of pain all day, every day though. I need to find a way around it but these earphones they should do the job so let's see how that works anyway yeah look that's all i gotta say i did say that i didn't want to be here long every day i've already been speaking now for like 42 minutes so i've i've overstayed my welcome i'm done with these laborious long ceremony messages i'm just coming here to check in clock in make it known that i'm here i'm human because at the end of the day if the rapture is not happening, I'm still trying to leave South Africa. And there's no way that's going to happen if I don't keep coming here every day. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Cranky. Bye.